Hey, what's up, everyone out there in YouTube land? This is uh, Mr. Myesis, and I'm going to talk about optimization problems. So this is a really, uh, a really common application of calculus that you see quite often. And, um, well, I guess quite often that makes sense because it's common, and <laughs> things that are common are seen quite often. So uh, they, they, you know what? A lot of people have trouble with them, but if you just keep in mind some of the, uh, you know, uh, the procedure that goes with each and every one of these, the procedure is, is very much the same. And just like when we did related rates and you stay focused on the procedure, um, they start to look a lot alike. So we're going to do that. We're going to stay focused on the procedure. I'm going to go through this example here. And then uh, if I have time, I'm going to make, uh, I'll do another example. If not, I'll do another video uh, with another example. So you have two examples of optimization problems. So what we're going to do here, we've got a problem here, an example here, if you will, a box. And it's a, a box with no lid. And you can see it has no lid. And one of the first things I want to do is I want to choose choose the variables and draw a label or label my figure. So I'm going to go and do that. I'll label one here for each of the steps that I do. So I'm going to say each of these is a, a width and a width and a height. And I know that these widths are the same because it says so. It says so in the problem that it has a square base. So let me continue. Write a primary equation. Okay, write a primary equation. That usually comes from what we're looking for. Find the dimensions that produce a maximum. So that we see the word maximum. We know for sure we're doing optimization. Maximum volume. Okay, so our primary equation in this case is volume. So what is the volume of this box? Well, it is the area of the base, which is W squared, times the height. Now, in, uh, in related rates, we were able to leave um, some of these things in uh, an implicit form because we were going to take implicit differentiation. That's not true in optimization. In optimization, we need this to be an explicit equation we need to have one variable so as I say here you want this you know you want to have one variable on each side you may need a secondary equation to do that so I need one variable here and uh, notice we have some additional information this uh, this this thing is going to be made by with 48 centimeters squared so that is the amount of area that I'm going to make my box with so if you think about this, um, this area right here is WH. This area here is WH. I've got four WHs, and I've got the bottom, which is the bottom box here. So on the side here, I'm going to say that the area is four WHs, because i got those four sides, plus the bottom, which is W squared. And I know that that's going to be equal to 48. That's how much material I have to work with. So this looks easiest to solve for h here. I don't want to have to deal with that w squared. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for h. And I'm going to go and plug that guy back in here. v equals w squared times 48 minus w squared over 4w. And w's cancel. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that guy. And I'm going to have the volume equals uh, 48 divided by 4 is 12. 12w minus 1 fourth w cubed, I believe. Okay, so that's my uh, my my uh, blah, blah, blah. that's my primary equation written with one variable. So uh, this was my step uh, two here, and this was my step three. Now I have my ver my equation with one variable on each side. Now I need to do step cuatro, which is find the domain. So the domain you're thinking to yourself, well, uh, self, uh, this is uh, this is a polynomial. The domain's all real numbers. Well, you know what? You got to be careful with optimization problems because you got to live in the real world, and in the real world, we're never going to have negative volume, right? We're not going to have negative amounts of stuff. In fact, uh, we don't have negative width, right? Width is our our x our uh, our uh, you know, in, independent variable. We're not going to have negative width. So um, we do have a domain restriction. Our domain restriction here is that the width has to be somewhere between zero, right? It can, it can be nothing. Um, and it's not really going to be nothing. I would say it's, I would say it's got to be uh, greater than zero. 
Um, what's the largest possible width that this could be? Well, the largest possible width that this could be in this case would be the square root of 48, uh, which is the square root of this, because we would say that, let's say, let's say the bottom here is just the, the flat surface, right? So if this was 48, this was the square root of 48, square root of 48, uh, square root of 48 to square root of 48 is an area of 48, which would give us no height. So if we had no height, we would basically have the biggest possible width we would have, right? Um, in this box, which wouldn't even be a box, it would just be like cardboard, right? But this is, the, this is our domain for this situation. So we've got our domain now, so this is number four. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna take the derivative, find the critical numbers, make a number line, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll show you what that et cetera is. So let's do number five now. So we're gonna take the derivative. V prime is 12 minus 3 fourths W squared. Notice that I did not take the derivative implicitly like I did in related rates. This time we're doing explicit. Set it equal to zero. Solve for W. Uh, w squared, I'm gonna subtract 12, multiply by 4 thirds, and I'm gonna get 16 and w is going to be 4. In this case, I don't need to take plus or minus because I know my domain has to be within 0 and root 48, which is around 6.9, somewhere around there, right? Because 40 square root of 49 is 7. All right, so now we got to, what do we got to do? We've got to do the next thing, find critical numbers. Well, that's our critical number, so we're going to put on number line. Critical number is 4. Uh, v prime is here. We're going to find out what, let's put 0 here and square root of 48 here. And we're going to go and put some numbers in our V prime here to see if each of these sides are positive and negative or whatnot. When we plug in maybe 1, we're going to get positive. Plug in something over here like 6 and we're going to get negative. So if this is positive, negative, we're going to have an increasing and then a decreasing. This says find the maximum. Ladies and gentlemen, usually it turns out that this is going to be that critical number, either relative min or relative max, based on what it's asking you for in your optimization. So that's great. So what is the maximum value? Well, we know that if we plug in 0, it's going to be down here. If we plug in square root of 48, it's going to be, it's going to be down here because it's the biggest. We're not going to have, uh, we won't even have a, a, you know, we won't even have a height over here. So this has got to be our maximum. So we're going to go ahead and plug in 4 into our uh, equations here, uh, over here really, right here, 4 in our width to tell us what our height's going to be. So when we do that and we plug in 4, we're going to get uh, 48 minus 4 squared over 16. It's going to be 30, 32, which is going to be 2. Okay. So let's go ahead and write a sentence as our answer. The dimensions of the box are four centimeters by four centimeters by two centimeters. All right, there we go. So that is an example of an optimization story problem. Again, follow the procedure and you guys can do it, all right? So I'll follow this up with another video with one more example. Talk to you soon, bye.